next oh we got the biggest little league cheating scandal ever why the young baseball doesn't exist now i told y'all uh, request some of these videos for me and i got y'all you know sammy shout you out real quick because you actually jamie jamie uh i don't know if it's how i say your name jamie any any loft i don't know how to say your name sorry if i butchered your name um but you know who you are you definitely be um commenting stuff like that so i definitely appreciate you Anybody else who want me to react to any other videos, hit the like button and subscribe button. Comment down what videos you want to react to. It don't have to be just from Baseball Doesn't Exist um, YouTube channel. It could be any other, like, good baseball channels just like this one. Uh, so, yeah, just let me know in the comments. Hey, let's see what it be time. Bye. Jackie Robinson West became the first entirely black team to go to the Little League World Series and win the United States Championship. And unlike the stereotypical white picket fence suburban Little League team, this team was based in some of the most violent neighborhoods in Chicago. And not only did they become the most watched team in Little League history, they were the most loved team in Little League history and probably the most famous. This fame brought them parades, hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations, a trip to Disney World, a trip to the World Series, and even a trip to the White House. But less than a year after their championship, Little League announced that due to cheating violations, Jackie Robinson West would be entirely stripped of their title. What has followed has been years of accusations, death threats, several lawsuits against Little League, rival coaches, their own presidents, and even Stephen A. Smith. But what did Jackie Robinson West actually do to cheat? How did Little League find out? Why didn't Little League do anything about it sooner? Who was the man behind these cheating allegations? What were his motives? And why many people today still believe that the accusations and punishments against Jackie Robinson West were racially motivated? Racially motivated? Wow. All right, oh, baseball doesn't exist. Hearts last summer as they battled their way to the national championship of Little League Baseball. But today, their title was taken away. Suspended from Little League activity. Good. This is cheating. It, it is. It's blatant cheating. Investigate every team in the league if you're going to investigate these young children. But I believe that. And I believe that race is in the, is in the midst of this thing. Every year in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, 16 of the world's best Little League teams meet for the most watched youth sporting event in the world. There are about 6,500 Little League teams on the planet. Each year, each Little League creates one to three all-star teams composed of their league's best players. These 10,000 plus teams compete in a tournament to see which Little League team is the best in the world. Statistically speaking- It's actually funny because one of my first ever um, baseball videos that blew up was uh, it was in TikTok. It was on TikTok. Yo. What is wrong with you? Can you knock? Like, what the? F I said your name, bro. You didn't say nothing. Mid video? Like, bro. I have nothing, bro. I can't find my contact case. It's not in here, dude. Get up out of here. All right, yo, sister. Anyways, though, um, so basically, it was on TikTok uh, about like, I'll say like, I'll say a year ago. It wasn't even a year ago. It was like two years ago. Um, I had posted like my, it was like my first time ever reacting to uh baseball, and it was a little league. It was like a little league, the best little league videos, and literally, bro, literally, it got like six million views on TikTok. Um, or actually, it was my first meal on TikTok. It was crazy, but. I was right to the World Series as well. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know I don't know who, who posts them anymore. I haven't seen no like I've been literally I was looking up Little League baseball be, like World Series or anything, just sweet teams, and then literally no videos that pop up. So if y'all know so many videos, Little League, because I do like the Little League, bro. It's crazy to see the little kids go crazy. Getting you know to the Little saying? League World Series is one of the hardest achievements in sports. If you want to win the Little League, this nigga crying? What the fuck? League World Series that nigga is crying, dog. What the hell? In sports. Bro hit, a, bro hit a home run and start crying on base. If you want to win the Little League World Series and you're from a state like Illinois, you must first win a district tournament, then a sectional tournament, then a state tournament, then a regional tournament, go to the Little League World Series, and then win that tournament. For most people, getting to the World Series is basically impossible, but for the kids from the 2014 Jackie Robinson West Little League, it was actually pretty easy. 
But even though their run to the Williamsport was basically pure domination, it surprisingly held Jackie Robinson West's biggest obstacle, because they stomped dozens of teams on the way to the World Series. But one of these teams had a coach that would eventually lead to their downfall, and at the time, they had absolutely no idea. Their path to Williamsport began at the Illinois District 4 Tournament. This is a district made up of six leagues, all located in the city of Chicago. Jackie Robinson West Little League was located in the heart of the city that is known for being one of the most dangerous in the country. Southside. According to the ESTA, Jackie Robinson West Little League's boundaries included three of the ten most dangerous neighborhoods in Chicago. 2014. And that's gonna be crazy too, bro. It'd be literally like those teams, bro. Because I was a part of a couple teams like that because I played Little League and stuff like that. And I used to play literally in the hood, bro. I remember it was a game right before the game, bro. We literally heard a nigga got shot, bro. We heard that shit, bro, right before the game. Because we used to come to the game um, like probably like an hour before the game started, you know, warm up and shit like that. And, bro, niggas was sliding on ops, bro. This is like, 20, it's like 2014, 2015, bro. In the city. You know what I'm saying? So, same with football. Feel me? Like, but the the teams be in the hood be the best teams, though. Because they all got, they all hungry. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to make it out. That's how it is. District okay. 4 tournament began that summer. Okay. Jackie Robinson West won that year. But if you look up the winner of the tournament online, it will tell you Rosemore Little League was the winner. Nobody knew it at the time, but this would be the last Illinois District 4 tournament ever played. But even without the controversy that led Little League to disband the district altogether, the tournament was kind of pointless. Because throughout the district's 40 year history, Jackie Robinson West Little League won it 34 years. And for the kids of Jackie Robinson West- Bro, this, this, what? He's a part of the Little League, what? Bro, he's like in like what fifth grade? I thought the little league tournaments be like what, like middle school? Like this dude, like he in like second grade, bro. You see on the other kids. I know y'all remember the other kids, bro. The other kids on the bus was like grown kids. Look at the city of Chicago. Look at, look at look at the kids. See, look at him, bro. He like he like 13, 14. This dude right here, like he about 12, man. 11. Nine. This would be the last oh, Illinois the same District team. 4 tournament hey, hey, ever cheating. played. Okay. But even without the controversy that led Little League to disband the district altogether, the tournament was kind of pointless. Because throughout the district's 40-year history, Jackie Robinson West Little League won it 34 years. And for the kids of Jackie Robinson West, that domination did not stop at the district level. When they moved on to the sectional tournament, they easily won the tournament, outscoring their opponents 70-6 to in only three games. Yes, that means huh? they averaged 23 runs a game. They then traveled what? to the state tournament to face even tougher competition. This time, they outscored their opponents 53 to three in three games. They were now what? going to the regional tournament to face. Nigga, what? Nigga, what? You said they won how many times? 30 to two? What do you mean they won 30? Bro, I swear to God, if I see a team, bro, if I'm playing against a team that scored 30 runs, bro, 30 runs, huh? They went third. Look, you see it. Thirty. It was twenty nine to two, bro. Twelve to one. They only they, they only scored two times. The first game they didn't even score. The most they ever scored against them was twice, bro. What is going on? The state champions from across the, the Midwest. These games were nationally televised on ESPN, and the winner of this tournament would go on to the Little League World Series. Jackie Robinson West went six and zero, ending three of these games by mercy rule. They faced Indiana in the Ooh, championship the and beat them twelve to seven, winning the tournament with a run differential Damn. of sixty three to nineteen. From the sectional tournament on, Jackie Robinson West went 12-0, winning 8 of them by Mercy Rule. So despite 8 mercy of their games ending after only 4 innings, they outscored... Right, exactly. What about the Mercy Rule? It's, how did you even let it 39-2? How did they win 39-2 off the Mercy Rule? What is the Mercy Rule? Isn't like if you up by like 7 runs? It's like 7 runs or like 14 runs. It's something like that. I remember it, bro, because I remember we used to Mercy people too. Their opponents 186 to 28, including winning eight of them by mercy rule. So, despite eight of their games ending after only four innings, they outscored their opponents 186 to 28, including the state championship game, which ended 29 to 2, and a district tournament game, which ended 43 to 2. Yes, Jackie Robinson West scored 43 runs in a four inning game. The coach who lost this game would go on to say, quote unquote, the game was so lopsided, it was almost comical. 
And I'm sure you remember this coach because he will go on to say a lot more about Jackie Robinson West and would eventually be the spark in what is likely the single biggest scandal in Little League history and cause Jackie Robinson West to disband as a Little League altogether. But at the Damn. time, Jackie Robinson West had other things going on. They were on their way to the Little League World Series and this wasn't just any Little League World Series. This was the most watched Little League World Series of all time. And this is due to multiple stories that spread across the world. Most notable Notably was Monet Davis. She was the first girl to ever pitch a shutout in the Little League World Series, could throw a 71 mile per hour fastball, and was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Nice. She basically became a national phenomenon overnight, and her stardom only brought more attention to Jackie Robinson. Hey West. man, don't ever, hey, don't ever count no girl out, no cap. You know what I'm saying? Girls can be right there with us. You feel me? No cap, Jackie though. Robinson West stood out in many ways. They were the first all-black team to compete in the Little League World Series in decades. They were from an area widely known for street violence. They were funny. They had style. They were polite. They were sportsmanlike. They basically disproved every negative stereotype black kids from the inner city endure. And best of all, they probably were the best team in the tournament. So when they started winning, people started paying attention. The mayor of Chicago and basically everyone else in public office instantly adopted the team as the heroes of Chicago and the whole city fell in love with them automatically. They were soon national celebrities as well. They were getting shout outs from Spike Lee, Lil Wayne, Chance the Rapper, Carl Crawford even volunteered to pay the entire team's family's travel expenses. At a local wow. Dick's Sporting Goods stores, there were lines outside of the store to buy a Jackie Robinson West t-shirt and they ended up selling over 17,000 shirts. News broke that a player on the team's family became homeless and supporters helped donate their family enough for a new home. In total, Damn. Jackie Robinson West ended up receiving over 300,000 dollars in donations. A combination between Jackie Robinson West and Monet Davis made the 2014 tournament the most watched in Little League history, getting 90% more viewers than 2012. Okay. When they beat Monet Davis's team in the U.S. semifinal, they instantly became the number one story of the tournament. Up to that point, Jackie Robinson West had rolled through every team that came into their path except for one, a team from Las Vegas who mercy ruled them in their second game at Williamsport. Jackie Damn. Robinson West was set to rematch this team. Now, I ain't gonna lie. The one thing I do remember, bro, playing Little League, dog, like, I swear, bro, like, them white teams, bro, the teams with all white people, bro, them always, that's why they said, like, oh, yeah, like, about the stereotype and stuff like that, because, bro, when you're an all-black team, bro, I know exactly how it feel, bro. Just look, I, it, it, it brings me back. What was, look, look at them walking through. Look, it's straight white people, bro. It's, it's no black people here, bro, but them and, and their parents. I don't know exactly how it feels, bro. You feel so out of out of place. You know what I'm saying? People looking at you weird. I know exactly how I remember this shit, bro. And then the then the, the kids be sweet. I ain't gonna lie, bro. They, especially them travel teams. Bro, the baseball travel team, bro. They are like, oh my. Because they remember, like, they travel everywhere. They travel and beat niggas ass. You know what I'm saying? So... Our team, that's so much we would get to. We'll play like our season and stuff like that. We'll go crazy in our season. And then maybe we'll play like a one-off game or something like that against travel teams. Bro, those was the games. We would get our ass blew the fuck out. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Look at this. Look at this. All white people, bro. Except they friends and shit. So when they started winning. Crazy. Or where was he at? Uh, right here. Except for one, a team from Las Vegas who mercy ruled them in their second game at Williamsport. Jackie Robinson West was set to rematch this team, but this time it was for the US Championship and there were 27,000 people in the crowd. In a very close game, Jackie Robinson West upset the number one ranked team winning the United States Little League Championship and they instantly became America's team. Even though they eventually lost the Little League World Series final against South Korea, they were already national heroes, and the celebrations that followed the tournament may have made them more famous than the tournament itself. Wow. <laughs> I love how they got the Jackie Robinson though. This is Jackie Robinson name.
Jackie Robinson West it's a bad look, bro. There's no way this is a bad look, bro. This is a bad look, bro. Everybody always was wondering, like, how the fuck are these black... I know they was licked, though, digging. How the fuck is these black kids beating all of us? And turns out niggas was cheating. Like, bro, that's a bad look, bro. Why can't it be just... You know what I'm saying? Like, god damn. That seemed to that's never a bad end. look. They had their own parade in Chicago in front of 10,000 plus people, were honored at a Cubs game and a White Sox game, were on the cover of a Frosted Flakes box, honored at the World Series, went to Disney World, were named the Chicagoans of the Year, and even met Barack Obama in the White House. And despite all this media attention, the kids still stayed humbled and kept their spotless reputations. They even did their own charity work by donating toys to local kids in need. But beneath all this positive attention, there was a looming threat waiting to take Jackie Robinson Little League down. In December, four months after the Little League World Series ended, Mark Conclub of DNAinfo.com published an article saying that a local Little League coach was accusing Jackie Robinson West of cheating their way to the Little League World Series. This coach was Chris Janes of Evergreen Little League, a nearby Little League located in a suburb right outside of Chicago. The same Little League team that was beaten by Jackie Robinson West in the sectional tournament, 43-2. to two. He claimed that Jackie Robinson West, like every other Little League team, was only supposed to field players who lived in a certain designated district. Instead, Oh Jackie my god, like, this right here gotta be like, I swear I hate this rule, bro, because I do this stuff even in football, bro. It's basically where like, they say, okay, everybody in this section, only people, so say like you live... Like, me personally, I live in Detroit, right? So they'd be like, okay, only people that can live in Detroit can play. Or or, or not, even, not even just in Detroit. It'd be like only these couple. Like, it's like a certain section of Detroit. It's, like, so stupid. You know what I'm saying? Why, why can't, it, like, if it's a public school, why can't everybody from everywhere just come? It's a public school, not a private. If it was a private school, okay. Or, or, or call the school some type of whatever, some, uh, something else type of school if it's only so specific people can come. Like, come on, bro. You need to talk about, oh, because it'd be like people like, it'd be people like say, say you, say you, you don't live technically in the area, but you right next to the area. So, uh, you know what I mean? You will still go to the school because you live right by the area. Like, you don't live technically in the, in Detroit or in wherever, but you right next to it. So they going to say that's cheating? Like, come on, bro. That's, Jackie Robinson West recruited players from nearby Chicago suburbs to basically create a travel team disguised as a Little League team to easily defeat every other team. This report caused a stir in Chicago, but Little League publicly stated that Jackie Robinson West, just like every other team, was checked multiple times throughout the tournament to make sure that their players were eligible and that the case was closed. But Chris Janes did not stop there, because when Jackie Robinson West won the United States Championship, wow. pretty much everyone in the state of Illinois congratulated them. And they did not know it at the time, but a lot of those congratulations were extremely suspicious. U.S. Representative Robin Kelly publicly congratulated two players on the team who she said lived in her district. A Sports Illustrated feature article briefly mentioned the school outside of Chicago that another player attended. A website dedicated to Lansing, Michigan publicly congratulated another player who they said lived in the area. A reverend at a church on the west side of Chicago publicly congratulated another player calling him a lifelong west sider. An elementary school teacher posted a congratulatory message to a player that she said she taught at a school in Buckwood, Illinois. Illinois, the mayor of Linwood, Chicago, told reporters that they planned on having their own celebration for a player who she said lived in Linwood, telling reporters, quote unquote, Chicago can't take all the credit. But only a few weeks later, Little League made a statement saying that the matter was still closed because before the 2014 season, Jackie Robinson West expanded their boundaries with approval of the surrounding leagues in their district, making their players eligible. However, this statement that was meant to clear Jack Robinson West of any wrongdoing actually hurt them because as soon as it was released, several other leagues in the district responded by saying that they never signed anything. And Little League said, well then, maybe the case isn't closed. About a month later, Little League came to Chicago to have a meeting with the surrounding leagues about the issue, a meeting that reportedly was extremely intense because what was discovered during this meeting didn't necessarily make Jackie Robinson West or the district as a whole look very good. During this meeting, Little League International found out that the league presidents had agreed on a clear set of boundaries in 2013. New boundaries were submitted by Jackie Robinson West before the 2014 season, but they were not approved by several other leagues in the district. And following the 2014 Little League World Series, Jackie Robinson had attempted 
but failed to get other leagues in District 4 to approve new boundaries that they had already submitted to Little League without approval in 2014. According to DNAinfo.com, this was all possible because the district administrator Michael Kelly sent the new boundaries which expanded Jackie Robinson West's boundaries well into neighboring Little Leagues without getting proper approval. Kelly had just been assigned the position and had very close ties to Jackie Robinson West. He had coached in the league for 25 years and served as the vice president of the league for 20 years prior to becoming in charge of the entire district. And when all of this news became public, Little League finally announced on February 11th that Jackie Robinson West would be entirely stripped of their title. They also banned Michael Kelly from serving as the head of District 4, suspended the coach of Jackie Robinson West, and banned Jackie Robinson West from Little League competition until League President Bill Haley stepped down from his position. For most, what? this serves as a tragic story of how adults cheated their way to a championship and the kids of Jackie Robinson West, who had done nothing wrong, would have to pay the con consequences, but many people in Jackie Robinson West Little League saw it a lot differently. But they chose the most severe, and in my opinion, the most unacceptable, to go after the children. The reaction was to come out in the snow and shovel the snow and clear the plates and get ready for next year. These are the champions. Young little babies, they played by the rules. Had three separate investigations. It was unfounded twice. They need to hold up to the same litmus test, the same standard, investigate every team in the league. Jackie Robinson West had many questions they felt Little League still had to answer to. If Jackie Robinson West had submitted their boundaries to Little League before the summer, why did it take until after the World Series for them to discover it? And what new information did Little League obtain since saying the case was closed and stripping Jackie Robinson West? They also heavily questioned the motives and credibility of whistleblower Chris James. Why didn't he publicly call out Jackie Robinson West until the World Series if the two teams played in July? A parent on Jackie Robinson West also claimed that the Little League James coached for attempted to illegally recruit her son to play for their Little League. And more questions arose about his credibility when he was arrested for assault after going into his neighbor's house trying to fight her husband. News of this arrest got local news right. coverage in Chicago and James told a reporter that he accidentally entered the wrong house. During the Jackie Robinson West investigation, Jane says he received multiple death threats and feared for his life. He would even go on to sue Little League for publicly stating that the case was closed after he went public, saying that this made him a target. And this would not be the last lawsuit Jane's would be involved with concerning Little League and Jackie Robinson West. Jackie Robinson West launched their own lawsuit against Little League to find out the answers they were looking for and even set up their own public funding page seeking $100,000 to help pay for legal fees. They received four donations for a total of $90. Dang! They later did find out this information. According to Little League, Jackie Robinson West sent multiple doctored maps and made it seem like players were within boundaries throughout this tournament, but that only five out of 13 players on Jackie Robinson West were eligible. Jackie Robinson West soon dropped that lawsuit altogether, and six months later, the parents and coach of Jackie Robinson West filed a new lawsuit, and this one named three specific targets, Little League, Stephen A. Smith, and Bill James. The what lawsuit the says that Jackie Robinson West coach Gerald Butler submitted all appropriate documents to Little League and that Little League ignored boundary issues for publicity, higher ratings, and money. The lawsuit also names Jackie Robinson West's own president, Bill Haley, saying that he withheld information from the team that they were being investigated and that even during the investigation, Little League used Jackie Robinson West for public appearances by sending them to the White House and the World Series. Public appearances. The lawsuit also named Stephen A. Smith for comments he made about the team and coach. The lawsuit argues for defamation because he accused Jackie Robinson West of using fabricated boundaries. But Stephen A. Smith and ESPN were soon taken off the lawsuit by a judge who asserted these comments were protected by the First Amendment. The lawsuit lastly right, names Chris fuck? Jaynes for having the investigation. That's like saying, take a nigga to jail because he called me out of my name. Like, what? Like, okay, and nigga, you better chalk that motherfucker up. From Jackie Robinson West's parents and waiting until after the Little League World Series to file a complaint. 
Chris Jaynes ended up filing a lawsuit against Little League himself, saying that he had originally filed a complaint to Little League in August, and by them publicly announcing that the case was closed, they caused death threats and emotional damage to the coach. The emotional and that's basically damage. where we stand today. All sides of the conflict suing each other nearly seven years after Jackie Robinson West won the U.S. championship. We don't know how these lawsuits are going to end, but what we do know is in 2000... Now, my question is... I like that go back a little bit, bro, because I wasn't listening. Um... Did they say, okay, well, I think it's right here. So, did they say that people was, like, where was they at, though? Like, because I heard something about Lansing, Michigan, and shit like that. Now, if they was outside the fucking state, then okay, like, that's cheating, obviously, because it's for Chicago. It's for a specific school, not fucking, you know what I'm saying, the whole east side, east of, east of the uh, United States. You know what I'm saying? So... That's obviously cheating, but it, I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to figure out where else was the other kids at though. Michigan publicly congratulated another player who they said lived in the area. A reverend at a church on the west side of Chicago publicly congratulated another player, calling him a lifelong west sider. An elementary school teacher posted a congratulatory message to a player that she said she taught at a school in Buckwood, Illinois. The mayor of Linwood, Chicago, told reporters Buckwoods, that that's not in Chicago no more. Okay. They planned on having their own celebration for a player who she said lived in Linwood, telling reporters, quote unquote, Chicago can't take all the credit. Linwood? Where the hell is Linwood? Village of Linwood? Let me look that up real quick. Village of Linwood, nigga? Huh? Let me see. So, the village of. Village of. Linwood. So, is that. Yes, in Chicago. Yes, that's a little far. Yeah, so y'all can see Chicago. It's down here. That shit down here. And Chicago all the way up here. Yeah, so now that's cheating. Shit like that's cheating. And he said the west side. Let's see, where it was. I probably don't say where exactly the west side is, but. Now, yeah, so. Yeah. So, like, yeah, so they were saying, okay, so I, I, I agree. That is cheating for sure. Um, like I was just saying, if they was if they was super close to where it was, you know what I'm saying, and um, they get the they get uh penalized for that, then okay, like that's cheating. I mean, that's not cheating, but niggas on the other side of fucking, they not even in Chicago no more. People in 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 Michigan, people in West Side, like okay, like you know what I'm saying. Maybe you can get away with maybe somebody on the West Side. Maybe you can get away with that. Linwood is a that's not in Chicago no more. That's outside in Illinois. So yeah, bro. So I agree with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but hey, one more video like this, hit that like button and subscribe button. I love y'all. We out.